Mayors and Vice Mayors, please take your seats. Before we go back into the session, I, I want to recognize our friend from FEMA, Mr. Chris, at the back. If you can't see him, he's taller than the door. Thank you for joining us, sir. Great. Have a seat, please. Anywhere there. <laughs> okay, it is 1128, and this uh, meeting is called back to order. Uh, under unfinished business, for, for, to finish up the liberation festivities, I, I do know that the festival huts are going to need painting. We did have the initial discussion with, the, with uh, Mel. And because they're anticipating a major renovation of the festival huts, they don't really want to pay to, to touch it up, which I agree. I mean, we did go through the, the huts, and it just needs a little painting, which I think we can have enough volunteers. I'm sure we can get volunteers to do that, uh, just to make it work for us. I agree. That's exactly why I said we're going to have enough. So <clears throat> Mayor Ungakta is offering 43 workers. <laughs> on top of PT's 15 workers, and the festival huts will be shining, shimmering, splendid. Can't you use primary? 48, 48. <laughs> oh, you have 48? Okay. And then I'll reach out to some of you who will also have, oh, and Barigada has 20. I have 32. Oh, okay. So to, to, to wrap this discussion up then, is there any other uh, mayor? The mayor of Hoggett wanted was talking about. Um, were you finished with your thoughts regarding the the festival huts and the participation? Was it you that, that said we were going to do village competition? Or I'm so sorry, it was Mayor Hoffman. The mayor of Hoggett is recognized. I was just saying that not a competition of some sort, but at least a display of uh, something um, you know uh, from your village. So if your booth, right, if you had something to promote your, your booth, whether um, you're going to sell something, whether you're going to promote it, or um, it's really totally up to you as long as we're there to participate. That was my thing. I, I didn't want to do a competition. Okay, that's fine. So there's two options, that the village just participates and we, you utilize one festival hut or we have some type of competition. Uh, I do have to say that a member did approach me also about some type of incentive for the 19 villages to participate. And, you know, this is really something that we're supposed to put together by statute. And I think we can do it uh, within reason, right? And so your people will be very proud to come to the festival huts to look for your, for your village and what, what you have, whether it's a game, whether you're selling food or or whatever, or s selling something. Uh, of course, a bigger plan for the entire Festival Huts and the, the party itself will be discussed, but our participation is, is really what I'm, I'm kind of honing in on. The Vice Mayor of Mingila is recognized. Hi, thank you. So I know that last year when we did the float, uh, we had made a logo of every village's uh, like seal on the float for foster care. So I think it's in the care of the uh, office downstairs. So I don't know if you wanted any type of consistency, at least we can use that because everyone has a logo. That's true. We, we can use that if it's still available. We can give it to every, every village so that that could be part of your front of the, of the hut placement, however you, you, you wish to decorate it, right? But at least to use the seal so that it's recognizable. I don't have any objections to that. Are there any, any other discussion on that? We, we have the seals, and we also have your flags that are out there that are available for use. Okay, so then that, that works, right? You have all of that. Uh, are, is there any consideration of any kind of funding for it? Any kind of, there's no, there isn't a lot of money, but do we need to offer a, a, a little stipend to, to the mayors to, to put together a, a display of some sort? Okay, well, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm, so I'm tossing it out because we don't want to end the meeting and they're gonna, you're gonna come back to me and say, Hoffa, how are you gonna help us, right? 
So I'm, I'm letting you know, uh, there is, we don't have too much resources, but to, if you want to and you want to consider some kind of contribution to, to your office for your efforts to the booth, I, it's a council decision. Uh, I, I'm willing to take or entertain any motions if there are any. Make a motion to uh, have the funding for per uh, district that's going to be uh, participating for that event. Do you have an amount? What's the? <laughs> Deny. <laughs> you have to appeal that to somebody else. Well, what do we cur currently have in our statute? Or be, what do we? No, I don't. So think I think, Mayor. Okay, well, let's go ahead and proceed with your motion. So the motion is to is I to offer some type of stipend to the mayor, correct? Mm -hmm. For I in exchange for participation at the festival huts and to be used, correct? Correct for the festival yes. huts. Uh, is there any? Is there a second to the motion? It is the motion is made by the mayor of Manila and seconded by the vice mayor of Barigada. In the discussion, I think I, I, we need to decide the total, the amount. Then, the mayor of Manila is recognized. Thousand. One thousand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Realistically, Order, please, if please. we could get at least five hundred per district, if there's if there's thousand available. Uh, the body put it a vote, but I believe 500 should be at least. Okay, so the mayor Mingilao is saying minimum five, possibly thousand. Is there yes. any further discussion on this motion? The mayor of Dededo is recognized. I think it should be one flat rate, not guessing, and I agree with the 500. I think everybody here, uh, it's equally divided again. Everybody would get $500. That's I second his motion to that. Thank you. The mayor of Hoggett is recognized. So it was my, it, that was actually what I was looking at. It's either we're going to go with either five or a thousand. Um, but again, we still have other core costs that will come out of, of the same account. So we need to be cautious of how we're going to, you know, uh, be dispersing money. 500, I think is reasonable enough for us to, you know, put something together. Um, I, but I believe that's good too, because I, I know that we also upped our own uh, for our monthly. So that, that, should suffice. No, okay. well, that's that was that's the reason why I was you know oh, it's a uh, different account? Meet, yeah I was looking at utilizing the Guam Island Fair account so oh. it doesn't touch our okay our revolving account. Point taken. But again, that's you know it's up to the body to decide. I don't want to touch anybody's body, but okay. <laughs> okay, so the the motion then or the discussion on the motion is. 500 per village f in exchange for a festival hut participation, whether it's a, g you, are, you are featuring your village, yeah. right? Okay, any further discussion then on this motion? So the motion is for $500 per village from the Guam Island Fair account. Any other discussion on the motion? Correct. It is 500. The mayor of Dededo is recognized. I just want to know, uh, let you guys know, if you don't have candidates, Please support those villages that do have candidates oh. by buying. We're tickets. getting there, Mayor. Thank you. So, oh, oh, your account. Okay, you can keep on going. <laughs> I just, I just got that. Thank you, Mayor. Mayors. Okay, if there are no objections, then the motion is five hundred dollars per village who participates in the festival huts. Well, that's all nineteen of us. So ninety-five hundred dollars is what we're approving. Any objections? Well, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All who oppose? Motion carries. Thank you. Is there a motion then while we're uh, approving because money has to come out of the Guam Island Fair and the revolving fund? Uh, is there a motion then to allow us, the committee, to spend money uh, on, from the Guam Island Fair following the regular procurement process? for the 79th Liberation Activities. I so second. The, oh, the motion oh. first, you need to make the motion. I make a motion to utilize those funds for the additional support with the Liberation Memorial. Thank you. The motion to uh, allow us to spend money from the Guam Island Fair is made by the Mayor Manila. Is there a second? Seconded by the Mayor of Dededo. Any discussion on this motion? Uh, 
the mayor of Derrida is recognized. Can it not be limited to just memorial, once memorial celebration? Can it be also including the mass and- Yeah, all 79th liberation. All events. Yes. Thank you. Any other discussion on this motion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All who oppose, motion carries. The liberation, um, as we were discussing this, KUAM reached out and wants to offer us another opportunity to be superstars. And so that they, they want to do a 19 village parade on Liberation Day. Uh, virtual, not virtual, it is live. So it'll be live. Is this something that you are consider you want to consider okay i'll just read the i'll read the the proposal or the format KOM will produce an exclusive hour long interactive show simultaneously live streamed to facebook and simultaneously live broadcast on KOM tv at 6:30 p.m. <laughs> on friday july 21st the show will be hosted by KUAM personalities and feature all 19 of Guam's villages. Each village mayor's office will have a designated two-minute spotlight segment exhibiting their gratitude for liberation, demonstrating this year's theme, and showing off what makes them truly unique and great. To commemorate our liberation and resilience against all perils, villages are encouraged to creatively decorate virtual floats, a room, office, wall, building, park, mural, parish, car, tree, monument, street, walker driving tour, etc., to be exhibited during their spotlight segment of two minutes. And then it goes on to say that there'll be addresses or messages from the usual dignitaries. That's the proposal from KUM. It will cost your everything you need to put together your two minute show and that's all they're asking from us is to, to participate. So if they, they're asking that if we agree to it that all 19 participate because it's, you know, it's live, it's you know, gonna be on KOAM TV, it's gonna be on Facebook, it's a big deal to some people. The, mayor, the Vice Mayor of Miguel is recognized. Can we suggest perhaps an option of just having them feature the huts that are being decorated since it's gonna <coughs> represent the village and maybe even pre-recorded so that it's already all documented and just shown on July 21st? It's a possibility. I don't know if we can pre... I like the idea. I think that's a great idea. However, the pre-recording might be difficult because some of us are not going to be setting up until either the day over the day before, and I'm sure on the production standpoint, they're going to need it days in advance, right? Uh, so I'm not... But I can ask. Any other uh, discussion then on this proposal from KOAM? Now I, we need to take a vote, right? Because we have to either support it or not support it. Any other discussion then on this? Okay, does anyone want to entertain the KOAM uh, proposal? If you want to entertain it, please raise your hand. <laughs> okay, thank you, hold on. Okay, I'll let them know. That's all I have for liberation right now. Is there any other discussion on liberation? Of course, we will have we will announce su uh, subsequent meetings to this because of the time, possibly sometime even uh, if not the end of this week, then uh, next week. Can I sure, the mayor of Dedido is recognized. Well, on behalf I, on behalf of uh, Queens, we do have five candidates, and um, like I said earlier, if you haven't bought tickets for or supported uh, our colleagues who do have candidates by taking books from them and selling it in your villages or among friends, uh, please do so because um, that funding again supports the events of the island, um, Guam Island Fair. And so the final counting is on June, July 5th and the coronation, it'll be a scaled down coronation, uh, not a huge ballroom, uh, because we are still in recovery mode, but uh, it will be on July 16th. 
So let's please support our colleagues and the candidates coming from the communities. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And yes, and thank you to all those mayors who were able to put out a candidate for this year. Any other discussion for liberation? If none, we're going to move on to ARPA and ESF. I think the, they're on this agenda because it's so important for each of us to realize that we have to spend this money. Uh, we're going to go in front of the legislature in a couple weeks, and they're going to ask us about our money. So I'm asking you to consider your end, right? You do your price quotations, you create your requisitions, and do your part and send it in. And if you're doing it already and you're still not spending the money for some reason, someone needs to know, whether it's Angel or myself. But I, I really feel like we can't lose this opportunity to use this money. And for whatever it is you need to get done, I know it, we are all exhausted. We really are. And, but we have to press on and we have to figure out how we can spend this money the way we planned to spend it, right? We don't want to recklessly spend this because we, we all had a plan for this money. So it, it, is, it really does behoove you to figure it out on the requisition standpoint so that you can blame somebody else, right? If you get your job done and your, your paperwork is incomplete, then it's not going to be your problem and that we can hopefully just help you justify or help all of us justify the reason for not uh, expending that money on time. But if, if we sit on it, it's going to be a disaster for us. So you have ESF. Those of you, those of us that have ESF, that's the same thing. If you haven't spent your money, you need to, you need to go back to your plan and spend it based on your plan. If you need to change your plan, you just need to make a simple, send a simple email message and request to change the plan. But think about it now and and we, we just have to execute now. Um, I do have to say, though, that on the second half, I'm, we're hoping that on the second half of, of the ARPA that we're supposed to receive, um, I'm confused on the amounts, but if Mayor Hoffman is correct, then that it's somewhere around $5 million. And if it is, then we already know that a portion of that money, we want to use a portion of that money for the the computers and the deba database that all of us were going to have so that we, you know, we all speak the same language throughout the 19 villages. But then the balance, of course, it, that's money to be spent again. So how can we spend that money? How can we even ask the governor for that money if we haven't spent what we already have? And when we're going, we'll be going in front of the legislature again in a couple of weeks. We don't want to we don't want to show them that we don't have a plan because all of us have a plan. So let's help each other to execute that plan for your ARPA and your ESF most especially. Yes. Um, um, Mr. President. Yes, the Mayor of Sinhania is right Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just on that, so the, the accounting was that we know we got the uh, localities money, which was $17 million, something like that. They did give the first half. When they did the gas tax, this is why that's, it's $5 million. When they did the gas tax reduction, remember that uh, everyone, everyone took the gas tax reduction so everyone can benefit from it? It shortfalled our accounting, which was two point something million dollars, which would have covered the cost of our community maintenance workers. So we front loaded, we took the money from the second half and put it toward that, which is why we only have five point something million left, which we'll work to set aside for the computers and the remaining balances. If that's what we're up for discussion for dividing it. Uh, that's what we were talking about. But that's why it went from eight down to five point something is because we front loaded it to cover the shortfall in 2022, right? Or 2021. But see, I don't, oh, so, uh, Mr. Vice President, I do, I, I have to beg to differ because I don't believe that we used that. Um, I, I believe we still have 8.9 million, but uh, I know that there's a, there's a, there's a deduction from that 8.9 million. I don't know if it's a couple or maybe 300 some thousand for a particular village, which is, which is fine. But I, because I think in yeah. the end, every village would, would stand to, to have an additional $300,000. Yeah, in cash. it came, it, 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 someone's deducted to cover shortfall of an interior project. The, other ha the others were, it was in the BBMR meeting that was used the liquid fuel tax. But not 2.8 million. Uh, yes, right, Angel? 
actually the 2.8 from uh, from this fiscal year um, we're still trying to JV it out of ARPA from the current money that we have and we'll give you the outstanding balance when I mentioned earlier about another 2.8 is dependent on what the legislature decides whether they maintain our employees within the villages, then they'll take that 2.8 again out of ARPA from the general fund, because it won't be coming from the general fund, it'll be coming out of ARPA. If they don't and those employees go to public works, which we all know we didn't agree with and it's not going to happen, uh, so that, that 2.3, 2.8 million dollars is still something that we need to set aside just in case. Um, we are asked again to uh, pay for the employees instead of it coming out of the uh, Guam Highway Fund. Well, I don't think it's going to come out of ARPA. I don't think it should come out of the ARPA. I think that every we'll, we we will have to figure that out because that 2.8 million shouldn't. I don't, and that's why I'm saying with, with with what the vice president is saying about the 2.8 million and coming out of the second half of ARPA, I don't ever believe having that discussion, but uh, we will have to iron that out. The, the point I'm making is you have to spend the money because we can't ask for more without you spending the money. And even if only one village is spending and the, the 18 isn't, there's still a problem. So we, we have to help each other. We do know that we use a lot of the same vendors because those, those are the ones that exist. Uh, but but we, just, we really just have to figure out how you're going to Take a look at your plan and spend your money. The Vice Mayor of Mangilao is recognized. Thank you. So I know there was a hold during the typhoon about or submitting ESF like invoices or any type of transactions. Uh, <coughs> when, when do you recommend we can start um, processing again with our projects? The, the ESF was just approved yesterday again for the uh, transferring all of the iLearn uh, money that was granted to the 10, 10 villages. Now that's been taken away from that program and given to whatever it is that you need in your village that you ask for that's underfunded, you can use that $60,000 now. So you, you can start right away. Um, from my talks with Stephanie, it could be extended past September 30 to December. So they're still waiting for approval, approval of that. Oh, the, I'm sorry, the mayor of Mingilao is recognized. Just because we're in discussion and then we're talking about a two point and million that's supposed to subsidize the maintenance kind of concern now where are we at after like you said we utilize all the money what what eventually is the 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 plan for those additional workers and stuff upon us still going back again to ask for the budget right for additional budget how 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 what security do we have right now that's i mean we, we all have our staff right what what kind of security measure right now and there echoes to them that they're they're still protected under us I mean, wh wh what is there in place right now? So understand, understand that point, right? That we, we don't want it to come from ARPA, but we don't want it to come from ARPA because I would rather, and we would rather see that money going into your villages, right? Into your improvements, especially now after the, the storm. But if we don't show any movement and we, do, we, continue, to, we continue to ask for you know, for more money, um, there's there's going to be, you know, there's going to be some issues. We're gonna we we have to be answerable to everything, and I guess what I'm trying to say is that there is 2.8 million from ARPA, which we could use, which we just give up. The other option is to not settle for, and I don't think anyone wants to settle for less three employees and no 2.8 million. I'm not going to settle for that. And the, the senators keep on asking us how they're going to help us. Well, guess what? That's how you're going to help. Will you back me up on that? So the 2.8 million, why should the 2.8 million, and that's what I'm trying to say, Mayor, is if I ask for the two, we'd ask for the 2.8 million to come from somewhere other than ARPA because we need the money, we have to show them we're using our money. And I get it, I get it. I feel your frustration about procurement, but what I'm saying is on your end, do your part and, and then we can move from there. As long as you've got your, your requisition and your, the price quotations that are necessary, we just move on from there. Mr. President, I'll, I'll, I'll make a breakdown of each village's use of the ARPA money as far as their allotments for the beautification, okay. their allotment for the 
um, car repairs and the wh whatever allotments you got, we'll give you a breakdown of what you have used and what is still available for you to use. Okay. Thank you. And, and you know what? Using the cash that you have is very easy. It's simpler, right? Because you get your quotations and you, you write your check. But, and I would love to do use the cash too, but I, we have to consider that there's still so much ARPA. So, you know, I, I get it, but let's just use the money. Okay. Moving on. Any other questions or, or concerns about ARPA and ESF? Okay, and then if you're ESF, if you're not using ESF, if you do have ESF money, Education Stabilization Fund, and your plans have completely changed and you no longer need to use the money, you need to let the governor's office know so that they could reprogram that money, but sooner than later. Please don't wait until September 30th to make that notice to them because we're all trying to use the money and make sure that we don't return anything. Okay, moving on to recycling revolving fund. I think, I don't know if there's gonna be any issues from here on out. Does anyone have any concerns about how they're spending their money, their POs, um, anything concerning the, the project itself? Because after this recovery, we're gonna have to go back to those purchase orders and we're gonna have to go back to spend that money. Any concerns that, that need to be ironed out? None? The Recycling Revolving Fund, any issues concerning the Recycling Revolving Fund on your end? Okay, if there are none, uh, moving on to our Fiscal 24 budget proposal. I think we, we talked about, you know, we started to hash out some ideas. Um, the last idea that, our last proposal was I received was from uh, Mayor Chargloff from Inalahan. And they all have, you know, I think they're all valid ideas. Um, but when it comes down to what we're going to, what we're going to approve, I think it has to have, there needs to be a meaning behind everything. So in the past, when you give twenty thousand dollars per village, and then the balance is divided pro, it's prorated. What's the basis for twenty thousand? Is what I'm saying, right? I mean, we just arbitrarily thought of twenty thousand. Why not make it ten thousand? Uh, there was a proposal that, that we split it up and some villages start out at 10, 15, and 20,000. I'm, I'm not against that proposal. I'm just asking, so what is the basis for it? And how, do we, how does that hold water so we're not questioned as to why we came up with that or how we derived that number? Um, in considering the budget as well, I think the one thing that we have to remember is that we have to remember to ask for carryovers because the delay caused by the storm I think really has has done a number on us and so we we're gonna have some money left over in your vomps of course if you can use it you should use it again but you're all gonna have money left over in vomps and we need to make sure that that's carried over I want to push for the no cap on the recycling revolving fund I've always asked for no the no cap even I mean, hundred thousand dollars is not going to cut it for some of the, you know, for the larger villages, right? So, I'm just asking for no cap, and we continue the reporting requirements like we have done. So that's my thing. the The only other official thing that I think I, I need to let, let you know, Angel, is the closeout on fisc on the last two fiscal years. I think I do want to know why we haven't closed out the last two fiscal years. If you were tuning in, we went to the legislature and here we are asking for all these things and then EPA says, well, how can we give you that to you when you didn't even close out the last two fiscal years? So, I, I don't know, Angel, I mean, what I would like to see with that is closed out I, and if there's a mayor that needs to be called out for it I'm sorry colleagues but two fiscal years you cannot close out that's not that's unacceptable and it you know just it's just unacceptable so I don't know Angel if you can shed some light on those two fiscal years please mr. president yes on the fiscal year 21 for the RRF actually every uh, all invoices have been paid the only thing that uh, that EPA doesn't consider it closed out is because the amount left over has not been deobligated, even though we haven't used 
any of it. We can't use any of it because that work request has already expired. For FY22, we do have two villages that have not completed all their work. And, and the reason why it's taking longer for FY22 is because DOA put another requirement in this time around that every purchase order needs an acknowledgement from the vendor that they are no longer going to submit any invoices towards that purchase order. So just imagine there's over a thousand purchase orders put out for the RRF. We need to get back a thousand certifications that the vendor no longer needs to, or no longer is expected to submit an invoice. But we have two outstanding villages that we know from the vendor that they have not received uh, payment because their invoices have not been submitted to us. So that's the hold up there. But as far as anything being expended from FY22 as well, that purchase order that was given out to, that work request given out to us is also expired, so we can't use any of that. We're looking at uh, de-obligating over $200,000 from FY22 uh, that, had, that was not used simply because some mayors didn't finish their purchase orders uh, that, was, that was given to them. But that's the old up. As far as uh, getting the figures and getting the amounts, those are already all set. It's just a matter of getting DOA to de-obligate the amount. But we have asked EPA on their own to go ahead and de-obligate the amount on their side because we are, we are no longer able to utilize those funds anyway. So that's, that's the hold up on that close up. Okay. Uh, I if you want the villages, I can give you the villages. Well, I just feel like that's, you know, that's still not, I, mean, I, I don't know, again, like that has, there has to be a better way to, to deal with those vendors that are not submitting those, you know, their letters to close out. I mean, that's fiscal 21 and 22. So that's, what I'm saying is if we don't do our work, why are we gonna ask for, for more, right? And that's, the, that's what I'm, I'm seeing a lot of. And I, I, I don't want our efforts to be futile. I want to be able to go to the legislature and get what we need, but we have to prove that we're doing our end, right? Uh, the mayor of Denver is recognized. I have a question on the recycling revolving for this fiscal year. And I think we deal with this every year. Is the only tire disposal site is Mr. Rubbish Man, uh, Guahan Waste, and their machine. They won't take it unless their machines are up, and they schedule us by village, two villages a day. Our problem is since last year, and then we didn't finish all of our money last year because their machine was down most of the time than up more down more time than up and we're seeing that same problem this fiscal year with those purchase orders i did ask mm -hmm. sabrina who brought me a permit for greenway site last week about another vendor she is going to talk to guahan waste uh, bob peron and um find out if he's not going to get it done, if he can't do it, because that holds all, all of us up, right? Um, we can't close that out for sure this year if, if we're not going to have a vendor for that. Um, I didn't realize that tires were part of this typhoon disaster, but boy, Mayor June, I feel for you, because you have more tires there than they have commercial tire and Goodyear put together. Um, but, you know, the disposal of tires, and this happened 22 years ago. The tires were the last ones to be dis uh, taken care of because the companies that are authorized to take it, are permitted to take it, cannot. And then eight, seven years ago, we had dengue because of the water in the tires. So what I'm telling the people, if you have tires in your yard, get your drill out and drill holes in them. But um, tires is going to always be a problem, and because we have purchase orders for it, I don't know what we can, how we can address it with the recycling revolving fund. Thank you. Okay, Angel, did you have any comments on that? <laughs> That's what happens when you only have one company on island. 
that provides the service. We are at their mercy. And even now, I mean, even Mr. Chris Beckett would tell you, they stopped taking tires of, over at, uh, at Tizen because I, they don't think that those are typhoon related and they're not reimbursable. People are just bringing it because they're clearing out their yards and their lots because they have an opportunity to do so. But um, there's another company we understand that is applying uh, for an EPA permit to do tire shredding and um, handling tires, but their problem is they need to be connected to sewer and it's gonna cost an arm and a leg just to connect to sewer, so just they're changing their mind about even putting a company up there at the back road, but on the back road, yes, yes. But, you know, that's, that doesn't get us, that's neither here nor there. We, we're still stuck with dealing with this one company, like the mayor says, open when they want to open and close when they want to close. And when their machines aren't working, they, even if you're already there, if you're tired, they'll tell you, no, sorry, take it back. And so I, I don't have much to say, and I'm sure EPA also doesn't have much to say, except we need some other investor to come on this island and decide if the tire business can be a money-making venture, but I, 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 I think it's not a money-making venture. That's why there's nobody else interested in it. I mean, even Mr. Peron is saying if he could buy, find a buyer for his company, he'd be more than you know, <laughs> right away be able to want to sell it. So, yes, you, we're, we're, we're stuck with that with that tire problem, and I know you have POs on that and. Those are probably some of the funds that we're going to have to, again, at the end of the, this fiscal year, return back because we didn't use it. Okay. Uh, me too. I've just had a lot of words sometimes. The, going back to that budget proposal then, is there anything else that any member would like for us to uh, consider as we, as we testify at the public hearing? for our 24 budget. We do, we, we talked about recycling revolving fund cap. We talked about carryover. Uh, I know that we're still concerned about some additional administrative personnel for procurement. We've, we've discussed that many times, so we will again take a look at that. One of the things that's, one of the things that's at the back of my mind is, you know, making sure that we all work with FEMA uh, for you know, at least hazard mitigation, right? So resiliency. I mean, we have to remember that every village has to be uh, every village has to be prepared for the next storm. And perhaps in our budget, we can consider something like that. I I think that we do have to have that. We do have to have, to have some kind of consideration for for future projects uh, similar to or for hazard mitigation. Uh, I'm not sure what everyone's going to get covered or what's going to get. Uh, taken care of by FEMA on your end if you've you know applied but I think we need to make that part of our budget as well any other discussion then on the budget I do know that if we don't vote on how we're going to divide that and have it in the placed in the budget act then we're gonna have to come back again to the body in October to to ratify how we're going to distribute the the, the budget is there any, any consideration about the budget proposals that were sent in the last few months? Does anyone want to entertain that at this point? Okay, uh, we'll move on then to new business. On a typhoon, the two items, of course, uh, recovery, our recovery efforts and um, and of course, everything that we received from the community, whether it's funding sources or in kind. Um, on the recovery efforts, is there anything that needs, anyone needs to, to discuss at this point? Uh, keeping in mind that, you know, we're, I think everything has changed, right? All the different types of what we're supposed to do since day one has changed up to day. So we'll work with you. The mayor of Santa Rita is recognized. Yeah, I'm just a little bit uh, concerned about the typhoon, metallic, typhoon-related materials. I see that all the uh, greenway sites are closing. Now the only one is over at EPAW. 
Uh, right now, I haven't touched any of my Typhoon related uh, metallic because we're concentrating on the greenways beside the road and cleaning up the village. Now, when I'm done, would there still be a place to accept the Typhoon related materials? I know Angel can shed some light on that. Tizen and uh, the digital transfer station are closing on July 3rd, Mayor. And so the rest, uh, whatever metallic waste you have, goes to EPA point. That closes on, uh, I believe, August 31st. So even if uh, yourself, if you have on the rights of ways, um, metallic waste, white goods, EPA point is your best bet. Okay, I'm sorry, I heard about tires too. I got a lot of tires. <laughs> and they White won't kids. accept any more tires. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other? Uh, the mayor of Inalahan is recognized. So, I have a question. So, my question is: So, if we have a, an established um, metallic ways, tires, what have you, are we getting any kind of purchase orders to have that removed and cleared, or? No. Um, you are to remove it with the heavy equipment that you're getting right. or with your trailers, but you're not going to get any funding to remove it. Now, once it's processed at those sites, uh, Mr. Uh, Chris is here, whatever expenses the government has in having those things processed, I think those are reimbursable. Unless, of course, the Army Corps of Engineers comes in on their own and takes over the processing of those items. But as far as giving you a purchase order so you can bring your white goods or your metallic to the site, there's no purchase order for that. You would have to um, take it yourself. But if you do have an expense that you, uh, let's say you spend for fuel or you spend for your trailer or, or whatever out of your $100,000, that's one of the reasons why I guess they gave you those funds is to use it. And that one is reimbursable, but you need to make sure you have proper documentation for that. The mayor of Inalahan is recognized. Oh, st I think I'm ready for a break. Oh, okay. I have a question. <laughs> oh sorry. Okay. The mayor of Dedit. So Angel, you said if we have additional expenses oh. that we use the money for, like I'm hiring a dump truck and I pay him every week, that's reimbursable? It really depends. I, I mean, Mr. Chris, if you want to chime in, but uh, if it's documented and it's and you have the volume or whatever it is that the time and materials that you spent on that uh, heavy equipment and it's typhoon related, then I'm sure it's. Yes. So Chris is here from FEMA. If you have not met him, well, now you have. Uh, sir, I think you could use that microphone if you don't mind to, to respond to any of those questions. I think you have to hold it. <laughs> Most of you, for those of you who have not uh, met with me, I promise you we will be out to see you. My name is Chris Baggett. I'm the Deputy Infrastructure Branch Director for this disaster, which means we're the public assistance guys, okay? And I actually was asked to be here today to specifically speak to this situation and time and materials contracts versus um, force account labor. So up to this point, I believe many of you have used time and materials contracts for hiring trucks and drivers. So I, I see lots of heads going, yeah. That needs to stop, okay? We can't use time and materials contracts um, and reimburse you for them. That said, we're just going to go to a different way of doing things. Time and materials contracts are frowned upon by the government. So for the first 30 days, and I believe that 30 days is up on the 2nd of, I'm sorry? Is it up already? 
Uh, 24th, okay, so it was about a week ago. Um, we're going to move forward, and um, the, the question was just raised about how do we move metals and, and all that. Well, if you have an employee of yours or even a volunteer of yours and a truck or a trailer or whatever, we will reimburse you under what is called force account. So in order to do that, we need a little bit of information from you. We need to know the name of the person who's driving the truck and how many hours they spent loading up, bringing it to the dump site, unloading it, and all that. So it's, it's not a very heavy burden to, to tell us who did it. And then we need to know about the equipment that you're using. So you used uh, an F-250 pickup truck with a 20-foot trailer or whatever the case may be, and that gets reimbursed on an hourly rate, okay? So you don't have to keep records and receipts for gas, uh, oil, maintenance, things like that. The hourly rate you will see is, is pretty generous. And it includes everything like gas and, and all that all bundled together. So it's, again, it's a, a relatively easy thing to do. Okay? Did you have a question, sir? I'm sorry. I got a concern now because you said that. So I just want to understand this a little bit more. So if we're getting assistance right now mm -hmm. and we're sharing a vendor that came from another municipality, but is being, they, they're not literally getting paid from us, but we're using them, but they're coming from FEMA. Correct. Do we concern ourselves now with them pulling away? The only difference now is going to be instead of time and materials, yeah. we're going to pay them based on the volume of what they haul. So those contractors are still going to perform in the community. That's Correct. my concern. Absolutely. Yes. So the I only difference is the way, the function in which they are going to be paid. Instead of time and materials, we're going to pay them, okay, you dumped off 40 cubic yards of vegetative waste today. We're going to pay you based on that, that volume instead of time. So if that format is being applied to them, how would that work? It, there's no other way around it with the contractors that are currently already <coughs> working for us? That's correct. All those contracts are going to be changed. That, that's the word I got from the territory. Okay. And my Mayor, understanding is that's already been done. And that's why I mentioned earlier in my report that there's a pause as far as getting out purchase orders for the, your current vendors. It's, they're changing the formula. Okay. And Claudia Ray, who's the chief procurement officer, actually was supposed to stop by here, but she wants to get an assessment from each village. Let's say UMS wants to work in Mangilao. UMS has to come forward and say the scope of work that you are given cleaning up all these streets and all that, how much would it cost you to get rid of all these materials because it's not going to be by hourly rental anymore. They don't care what kind of equipment you're going to use. They only care about the volume of the debris that you're moving and taking to wherever the dump site is. That's what's going to be counted and that's the only thing that's going to be re reimbursable. They don't care about how many hours your equipment was, was used that amount that they give to GSA and GSA issues them a purchase order, that, that the cost of the equipment should already be in, in there considering the amount, the volume of de debris that you're going to bring. Correct, Mr. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So um, that being said, that will be in line to as the amount of uh, fr dumps that they dump in a day, if we're recording, correct? Basically, yes. Okay. Yes. So. The one before this discussion that we're having as a body now, do they still, they're gonna get paid, but they're not, we're not gonna get reimbursed. But moving forward, depending on how we do the, the current clearing, I got you. Correct. I got you. Okay, got so you. that's for the contract side okay. of things. Okay, yeah, I got you. If you have employees and your own equipment that's, that's being used, that then we're gonna use what we call um, force account labor and equipment and materials. Okay, so there's two sides to this equation. Okay. okay. The, med the mayor of Dededo is recognized. Okay, so, so Chris, uh, for like Mayor Allen said, 
the equipment right now I've been paying them on the hourly based mm -hmm. on the hourly so what I'm gonna do is convert that because we know how many loads we've done how many cubic feet or cubic yards yard. we've done and how many times we've taken it to the disposal site Correct. all green waste I'm gonna convert that up hour to, up, yeah. so everything that you've done for time and material yeah you don't have to you no, we're not going to so up to the twenty-fourth. Just until this the month, it's time and materials. Okay. Going forward from the twenty-fifth. Okay, from the twenty-fifth on, on. Yes, it's okay. going to be. So the uh, anything from the twenty-fourth before prior is time no and change. Uh, no, change. no change. Okay, and then from the twenty-fifth to forward, whatever when, when yeah cubic yards, cubic yards. Yeah. and so this and then you mentioned staff where the force account. Force uh, I had my backo working from day one. Mm -hmm. uh, so the backo, what the hours that we use the backo, is it also we, we including chainsaws or no? Yep. Chainsaws. Virtually and anything. You all the fuel that we weren't able to get, but we got anyways. Fuel. Fuel. The is personnel. In the car. So when we give you, you're going to tell I'm us. I'm sorry. Could you use the microphone? I'm sorry. Sorry. Thanks. You're going to tell us what kind of backo you used. Okay give us the model number, yeah. we look it up and we say, okay, you're going to get, uh, I'm making this up off the top yes. of my head, but $32 an hour. Okay. Okay. Included in that $32 an hour are your fuel costs and, and all that sort of stuff. Because the back was the diesel. For so the back was the diesel. diesel correct. You don't need receipts. to give me okay. receipts for gas and all that. It's included in the rate. So we don't need to say diesel in a separate as long as we're using that backo, Correct. you already include Correct. the rates for the diesel. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So and and look, if you have a backo and you use it six hours a day and a couple hours out of the day, it's on standby because you know we're we're doing something else and we, just put down you had eight hours a day. Okay. You used it for the whole day. Right. Obviously, if you use it for more than eight hours, put down for more than eight hours. But we generally go on an eight-hour day. I appreciate you more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The mayor, um, Mayor Denito, you're okay. Okay. Well, the mayor. Well, then you also said forced account would be even our vehicles, our official vehicles that we use to haul the trailers. So we're hauling a trailer, and then we have a vehicle that's also pulling that license plate number. Or a type I don't of need vehicle, the license F-150, plate number. Uh, Ranger, yeah. whatever it is, right? Yes. Just that? Whatever it is. And then the size of our trailer? Correct. Okay. And then personnel? Yes. We need to okay, know Okay, so you, you could tell me that Joe and Sam drove the truck to the site um, okay. on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, whatever the dates were and things like that. Uh -huh. And then we will ask you for your payroll records. Okay. To say how much did you pay Sam and, and Joe? Okay, so we have okay. that when we turned, submitted our timesheets because we have the task performed yep. and the streets that they were working on. Yep. So that would justify, just attach that. Exactly. To the, okay, thank and, you. And your payroll records will include things like um, fringe benefits too, not just the hourly rate, but your your Social Security and all that other stuff that goes along with it. Okay, the mayor of Chalampal Ward is recognized. Yeah, thanks, Mr. President. I, I guess, you know, uh, the question I have is that the heavy equipment that I've been utilizing to remove debris in the village has been purchase orders um, under um, Homeland Security. Are, is Homeland Security going to now do these modifications? Um, or, I mean, how does that work? Yes. I, 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 haven't, I haven't effectuated any purchase orders or any agreements with these vendors. They've just been assigned to Order Chalampago to do the work that they've been doing since since uh, we started removing debris. So how will that change the, the relationship between the vendors assigned to me under civil defense's uh, POs and, and what, what we're doing moving forward as, as, as of the 25th? 
I think Angel can respond. So basically it's that you will continue to use the, the vendors that were assigned to you until the PO runs out and only civil defense can let you know when the PO runs out or the vendor themselves. Is that, is that what you're asking? Uh, and Mayor, I, I mean, I guess. I mean, because it isn't, it, I was under the impression that because it's FEMA's PO, I mean, uh, uh, civil, civil defense's PO, that they were the ones who were going to process the, the request for reimbursements because oh, they're the that. ones who are paying it. Or is, are we going to be doing that for them? No, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. It would be them. Correct. It would be them. And my understanding is that they have already converted these from the time and materials to the volume contracts. Okay. 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 Chris, so, do you have a yeah, question? So for me, it's nothing, nothing's changed. Correct. Yeah, as far as getting your stuff picked up, but no, there should be no difference. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, I have a question about volunteer hours. So some of us have, uh, you know, volunteers at the office since the beginning of the storm, uh, are we able to use those hours as well for any kind? Absolutely. And, so how, and what, do you, what do you expect? Is it the same as just a name and the hours worked? And Correct. Correct. Okay. So l let me address volunteer hours, or as we refer to them, donated resources. Okay? So donated resources, if you have members of your community or, or other volunteer agencies, whether it's Red Cross or, or whoever, um, the Southern Baptists came in, whatever. Those donated resources, even though they came from an outside source, you are the beneficiary of those donations. So you can use them to your advantage. Okay. How do we do that? Well, let's say you have $100,000 in costs for your debris. As you know, I think FEMA is going to reimburse you at a 75% rate. So you're on the hook, in effect, for $25,000, right? you can use those donated resources to offset your percentage of your costs. So <clears throat> if we had 10 volunteers come in and they did debris cleanup, what we will do is we'll, we'll figure out some equitable rate of, I don't know if it's $15 an hour, $20 an hour for their labor. Okay, so they worked in your area for 15 days, 10 hours a day at 20 hours uh, or at $20 an hour, that's what, $30,000? Yeah. Okay, um, we're not going to give you all 30000 <laughs> but we will give you up to the total amount of your cost share. So if your cost share is $25,000, we will give you up to that $25,000. So you will owe nothing out of your own pocket. Okay? If you go over that, we're not going to give you the extra cash to have a barbecue. <laughs> okay? So um, donated resources uh, can be a very valuable thing to you. Um, so please keep track of them, again, for you know, labor hours and stuff. And all you need to do is put Joe worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from this time to that time and we'll sit down with you and figure out what an equitable hourly rate of pay is for their labor. Okay? Thank you. Any other questions for Chris at the moment? None? Okay. We'll continue our, thank you Chris, we'll, we'll continue our discussion but please don't, don't leave. Please don't leave. Yeah, yeah. That's we're gonna bribe you with lunch so that you could you could do our P. Thank you, Chris. Okay, go, going back to the uh, typhoon discussion, order, please. Uh, the mayor of Dedo is recognized. 
So, you know, I was visited by an organization right after the typhoon. They gave me a card. They say they do these things all the time for different groups. And I know you were also visited by an organization and Angel was visited by an organization. Do we need, I mean, can we do this? Is this something that with the PAs and stuff, is this something that we can do on our own individually and get it right? Or is it something that we would want to contract somewhere? So I did ask the Lieutenant Governor for assistance and I, I, I did let him know that we're, we're going to be in need of some help those putting your PWs together, your project worksheets together. Uh, of course, that's a contractor, right? So it has, they have to get paid. And the money that we have is probably not enough to pay, pay that yeah. contractor. Yeah. So that's why uh, I did ask the Lieutenant Governor for you know some kind of uh, suggestion as to how they can help the council. Because I did also mention to him that we are interested in applying individually as opposed to a one council. So to answer your question, I mean, I can follow up with him because actually, the, you know, they hold all the money, right? So we can't do anything without their their help. And e even the money in our account won't pay for the, yeah. the contract. So, yeah. Is there anyone opposed only, to hiring a contractor? This is, you know, to do this, and we've done a lot since, I mean, at least I know I've done a lot. Plus, he mentioned that volunteers, you know I have a shelter with Red Cross volunteers. None of them get paid. I'm gonna go there and get their timesheets, their sign-in sheets, so I can use that, their volunteer hours, towards my, my project program assistance because uh, I have volunteers from churches and realtors and everyone that came in to help, but you know, we have big, projects uh, and I have one AA two clerks who are working seven days a week and um, to take care of our people that need the assistance this shelter has been open I'm wondering when they're gonna close and so there's volunteers in there so you know it's just to take our staff and additional you know all these other stuff it's just additional task. Well, I'll follow up, Mayor, after this, and, and hopefully it'll be some good news for all of us. Uh, Chris, are you IAPA? Yeah. Oh, PA, okay. So in PA then, in considering, again, hazard mitigation and, and the, the villages, so when we apply, how, how much of hazard mitigation can we consider? Uh, and so I'm talking about water catchment systems, uh, generators for the offices. Uh, if, there's, if the office is in a flood zone, is there any contingency for flood mitigation for the office? If there were facilities uh, like my playground or a basketball court that was flooded, could we apply for some kind of flood mitigation for those government facilities? The answer is yes. Oh. What okay, so I, I'm not the mitigation expert. But we you'll have find them one. Here, um, and, and we certainly can, we'll have them come out to you. So we, we, are, we are really now just getting into the full blown public assistance process. Because up to this point, we've been in um, response mode. Now we are transitioning into recovery mode and public assistance is considered recovery, okay? So, to this date, um, I just looked, just before I came here, um, the largest number of applicants that Guam has ever had for a disaster was 40. And that was for COVID. The largest non-COVID event, typhoon, in history was 26 applicants. Right now, this morning, as of today, we have 68. And that number is rising every day. We had eight new ones since yesterday, okay? 
We have just had to add another applicant briefing, which will be 10 o'clock Thursday morning, I believe, for those people that didn't have the opportunity to, to come to one in the past. So we've just added a fifth one. So that said, let me talk a little bit about mitigation. There are a couple of different kinds. One is called 404 mitigation and one is called 406. And those numbers simply are for the section of the Robert Stafford Act, which is an act of Congress. So that doesn't mean a heck of a lot to anybody here except this. 404 mitigation is a percentage of the total amount of money that FEMA is going to spend on this disaster. So let's say for the sake of discussion, it's $100 million. FEMA will give 15% of that or $15 million to the governor and she can use those funds at her discretion. They don't even have to be for disaster related damages or anything. She literally can use them for anything that she wants to make the island more resilient. Okay? The other kind of um, mitigation, 406 mitigation, is for damages that are a direct result of the storm. Okay? So if you had um, a community center, and the community center had its roof blown off, and you've got half a million dollars worth of damage to the building. How does that mitigation work? Well, you come to us and say, well, Chris, look, uh, you know, we can put a new roof on it, but I'd like the roof to be better this time, because next hurricane, or to uh, typhoon, excuse me, I don't want to go through this again, and I don't want the roof to, to blow off again. So what do we do? How do we make this better and more resilient? So there are a couple of different rules. The first one is the 15% rule. If what you would like to do is less than 15% of the repair cost, which is half a million bucks, right? Pretty much we're going to say, yeah, go ahead and do it. It's not a, no big deal. If what you are proposing is between 15% and 100% of the cost, up to half a million dollars, we may very well say yes if it's reasonable in what you're doing. There's going to be a little more questions and answers and, and, and discussion, okay? Now, there are also circumstances where the mitigation costs may be more than your repair costs. And that is also possible to do too. When would that occur? Well, if we go back and look and see that the roof of this building has been blown off six times from past disasters, and we have spent three million dollars fixing your half a million dollar roof, well, yeah, it, it probably makes sense for us to go and do something different than we've done in the past. So we would do, in that case, what's called a BCA, which is a benefit cost analysis, okay? And in the benefit cost analysis, w we look at things like, well, okay, how many people would benefit from, from fixing this roof? And, and you got to understand, FEMA doesn't want to come back again. We don't want to come back the seventh time. <laughs> We've done this six times again. So in those instances, yes, it is actually possible to get more money for mitigation than you actually spent for the repair. Um, and in some cases, I, I'm from New Jersey. We had a water treatment plant. It was the third largest water treatment plant in the country. They had $17 million worth of damages. We gave them over $100 million in mitigation. 
for $17 million in damages. We actually built a flood wall, 12-foot high flood wall around the entire plant, okay? So the costs are not necessarily directly tied to one another in that, you know, there's some upper limit ceiling how much you can get for mitigation. It's based on the circumstances, okay? Does that make sense? Sir? Uh, does it make sense, sense to me? Okay. So I did know that. I just needed to make sure that my colleagues were aware of, you know, what the possibilities are. So. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any other questions? But we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll try to wrap up the meeting. Are you going to leave or are you going to hang out a little bit? You just invited me to lunch. Didn't That's you? great. So, <laughs> so we can talk more. No, I just need to know. I just needed to know what your intentions were so that what they can do is individually they can, while you're eating, uh, you can chat. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> okay, so uh, going back again to recovery efforts, is there anything that, uh, that we need to be aware of on your end or that you need assistance with? Please don't ask me about GPA or GWA. Okay, uh, great. Oh, the mayor of Sinahani is recognized. The telecommunications, though, is there any way that we can ask IT&E, Docomo, GTA for an update? I know that's our biggest frustration for the residents outside of power and water is the service. You know, they're coming out saying that they're full on, we're good, and I don't know what the recovery plan is for them. We don't get much messaging from them, but, you know, if, if there's something they can kind of just tell the mayors like, hey, we're going to be in your village, we're going to string up your, a lot of the low-lying lines in our villages are all communication stuff from them. And, you know, we can't even go in, in clean areas because these lines are low and they're on the ground and entangled. So if these companies can take it serious, I know they keep patting themselves on the back saying, oh, we've brought in more people to do this, but give us the, re give us the restoration plan for them as well. Otherwise, you know, we'll do what you say. Tell the boys, cut it and throw it off to the side and you figure it out later. <laughs> okay. Don't do that. <laughs> now, now you get fined. They will do it. <laughs> so okay. maybe an email to all three uh, companies. Yeah, we, we, can, uh, we can make that request. We can request. We'll see what happens after that. Uh, in, in line with recovery efforts, of course, you are aware that the mayor of Tinian offered, uh, has given us a donation of $20,000 uh, specifically for the villages and so that's why the donation was made to the Mayor's Council of Guam. Because uh, we do need council approval to spend that money, um, I do need to know what we would like to do with that, that money. Any, any discussion on that donation of $20,000? Motion to divide equally, is this that possible? Okay, there is a motion on the floor by the Mayor of Sinahani to divide the 20,000 equally among the 19 Second. villages. And it is seconded by the mayor of Mangilao. Any further discussion on this motion? I do. I do. Okay, the mayor of Hagat is recognized. Because there's 20,000 in the 19 districts, I, I would like to suggest that maybe we give the 5-5 five five to Jigo and to Dedido. I love that idea. So, nine, so, so Melissa doesn't ask us about equal share. At least give the additional 500 to the most affected. Can you split 500 because we're four for Hold on, let's, let's use the microphone. Uh, Mayor Kevin, what is your suggestion, please? My, my suggestion is that we take, because there's 20,000 that was donated, we take 1,000 to each district, and then the remaining 1,000, we go 500 to Jigo and 500 to Dedido. Get, okay. Get and to include Mingila, right? No, sir. So the and motion is amended then. We're going to take <laughs> it as an amended motion by the mayor of Mingila. And seconded by the, I'm sorry, the mayor of Sinani and seconded by the mayor of Mingilao that it'll be divided evenly for the 19 villages and then the remaining ha um, thousand be divided half between Dedido and Jigo. Any further discussion on Thanks, this motion? Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If there are no discussion, any, um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Love you, my girl. Um, any welcome. other? Thank you, my boy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so on the recovery efforts, any other reports? I won't ask about your sign again. Oh, the mayor of Dededo is recognized. Oh, oh, no, okay. Um, of course, I put expenditures and reimbursement. We talked about <laughs> day in and day out. We talk about making sure you keep your records. Please make sure that you do keep your records because, uh, you know, especially if you're applying for reimbursement. Any questions regarding expenditures or reimbursement during recovery? 
Okay, if there are none, I do want to officially thank, I mean, I know we, we will do something for them. Um, the, the people, the many people that have come out to support the Mayor's Council of Guam specifically, and most specifically, I want to recognize GTA, uh, the Mayor of Tinian, the Mayor of Saipan, and the uh, Commission of Corrections, Anthony Torres. I do want to make special mention about Mr. Mark Valdiga, who did offer us the show last night. I hope that you all uh, enjoyed the show. It was his, um, his expression of thanks for the work that uh, we do with our communities. And of course, APL and Matson for, for shipping the CNMI donations to Guam. Uh, JJ Ambrose also for a, do a donation, uh, purchase of food for our volunteers. KFC, Weston, and of course the Bank of Guam uh, through the, the village mayor's offices gave out some bags last week and so they did work with a few of us in making sure that that was taken care of. Uh, any, any other um, concerns or issues regarding the typhoon or their recovery efforts? The mayor of Hoggett is recognized. No, just me, okay. If there are none, I do, uh, we'll move to announcements. Don't forget your quarterly reports. If you're, make sure that you're on time. That's another thing we talk to the senators about, our quarterly reports, our financial reports. You, you, most of us, I think, are doing a good job with reporting and posting. So please make sure that we do that, especially before that deadline, because again, we will be in front of the legislature very shortly. Any other announcements? I do. Okay, the mayor of Hoggett is recognized. Um, we'll have two visiting vice mayors from our sister city, one from uh, Sablan, Vice Mayor Baldo, and then the uh, Vice Mayor uh, Roderick from uh, La Trinidad visiting on Friday to Monday. Um, they were supposed to be here for the Mango Festival, but because we pushed it back, they were not able to change their flight, so they will be here. That's the sister municipality of uh, Tumuning and Dedo for La Trinidad, and then Sablan for Hoggett. Yeah, mango for you. Puree. Cost. <laughs> Any other announcements? If there are no other yes. announcements. Yes. yes. Oh, um, Angel. As you know, um, your good friend and our, or my good friend's funeral is tomorrow. Oh. Mr. Frank Aquino. And I had mentioned this to the president, whether would be willing as a council to approve from, a, from our dues at least an amount to purchase a wreath for Mr. Aquino's yes, funeral. I make, I make a motion to... Uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, the mayor of... Um, Manila. Manila is recognized. I make a motion to use our dues to purchase a roof for the... a uh, wreath for the memorial. Yeah, a roof for all the homes and the wreath for Mr. Frank Aquino soon. I second, uh, second. the motion. And I can Term it be a very big wreath? Because he's a big man with a big heart. Yes, yes, big okay, heart. So seconded by the mayor of De of Dededo. The discussion on the motion, Mayor of Dededo. <laughs> Did you have Yes, any? discussion is, you know, Frank, I think really Frank disturbed um, a state funeral, and I said this in our chat. He's helped, I mean, us mayors, you know, GPA has a, a rule of emailing it to, emailing our request and stuff to GPA. But even if you email it or send it to their customer service, if you WhatsApp it to Frank, it's done that night. Okay? Uh, you know, this recovery, even the guys at GPA today are saying, I, we told them we have no direct co connection. Uh, I saw when, when uh, Vice Mayor, um, there was something where Vice Mayor uh, Jigo said, we can't tell you what's going on with GPA in this recovery because our connection is gone. So, you know, I even, I re still today think, and his funeral's tomorrow, he deserves a state funeral. But I think, I know we usually get a normal size wreath to just offer our condolences, but I really want to put something out there. If Teresa Spuckbuck wreath. To, uh, and, and for Tata, uh, please put something really that symbolizes and dignifies this, this man who really helped all of us. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion then on this motion for the wreath? Are there any objections for getting, a, what did you call it, a really big wreath? We're gonna need an amount. Not like the governor's wreath. 
Not like the governor's wreath. We're going to need an amount for the roof. Okay, so bigger than, than, no, than, no, than usual. Any objections then? That's part of the discussion on that motion. Any other discussion on that motion? So if there are none, and all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Any other, any other announcements? If there are no other announcements, it is 12.48 p.m. and this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.